Well, hi there. Today it's going to be Jack and Mini Dean. Because if you've been following my channel, you know that um, Dean is at the mechanic and he's been there for a while now and he will be there for the rest of the week. So hence, I, it's going to be me and little Mini Dean. I'll keep it short as well. Um, it's Sunday. I promise to post a video every Sunday. So I'm trying to stick to that. And as you can see, no longer in my van. So I thought today I'd do a question and answer with you guys. So I asked you on YouTube and on Instagram if you could send me a question that I could answer in this Q&A. Now, if you've never been here before, let me quickly do a recap what you've been missing. Hello, I am Jack and uh, Jack is 55 years old and a teacher or used to be a teacher, let's put it that way. I decided to quit my teaching career, although it wasn't much of a career, but you know, my teaching life and venture out in the world, in Europe with my van, um, van, as you can see, a white Ford Transit 2012, very small, uh, which I converted myself into a livable space. And um, I ventured out around Christmas last year and I went to Spain, well, through France, Luxembourg and other countries. And um, I'm back now after four months on the road and it was really, really lovely. But because of some engine problems, I had to return back home and thank God, or, you know, I was lucky enough to still have a home to come back to. So I'm very pleased that I decided to keep my home for just a while before I, you know, sell up and uh, completely live in a van. So I asked you on YouTube and Instagram to ask me some questions. Uh, I'm just going to do a potluck and, and, and see what appears and then we will see what kind of answer I have for the questions that you posed me. Um, let's start it with question here. How did you decide on the van model? I think it's one of those questions where I didn't choose the van but the van chose me. Does that sound uh, familiar? Um, I, after renting, after, I have to admit, before venturing out on van life, I thought I'd better test this. So I rented a mobile home for a month and I traveled uh, around, uh, where did I go? I went to Luxembourg, France, Italy, Switzerland and back with this rented van. And to be quite honest, the first three well, I rented it for a month and the first two weeks, to be quite honest, I didn't like it. It was a really, really big van, I have to admit. It was about seven meters long, but it had all the mod cons, the shower, you know, beautiful kitchen, double bed and everything. But I just wasn't very comfortable in it. It was also very, very new. It smelled of Chinese plastic. I'm not sure, but... But it was quite the experience. So the first two weeks I felt very uncomfortable because it was so big and I couldn't drive with it and parking, you know, I, I like parking in cities and city centers and that was just too difficult. So, but after two weeks I got more used to driving with it and parking with it that um, I decided, yes, this is something I would like to try a bit more. So then I started looking for a van. Now, Post-corona, you have to think post-corona, there was a shortage of vans. So every time you saw something nice, it would be like, oh yeah, we can deliver that in next year or in two years time. I was like, well, no, because I want to start now. I'm, I'm an impatient git, basically, and I want to start now. So um, then I went on to the second hand market. And again, same problem. There was a shortage. The prices were extreme all of a sudden. I mean, a bit ridiculous as well. So um, I, I tried a lot of ads in multiple countries. And then one day I stumbled across Dean and, you know, he wasn't perfect. But, um, oh, by the way, when I'm pointing out there, it's like that's where the window is. That's where the door is. And that's where usually Dean is parked in front of my house. That's why I'm pointing out there. Um, 
so that's when I saw him and I thought like, yeah, that's the one. It was a bit overpriced, but I thought, no, this is the one. And as per usual, I slept one night over it. And then the next day I went out and bought Dean. There you go. Next question. What's your favorite place or memory so, f so far from your road trip? Ooh, there's many. You know, there's just many. I, I can't really pinpoint one, to be quite honest. Um, like I said, I, I like city life, but then I've been to places in nature totally deserted that I loved as well. So I, I really can't pinpoint one. Sorry. Next one. What type of music do you like to listen to on the road? Good question. Um, I have... <laughs> I have a USB stick with my music, which is just basically pop music, to be quite honest. But when you're doing a long drive after a couple of hours of your own music and you nearly know what, what next song will come up, um, I tend to switch that off. I've noticed in France and in Spain that whenever I switched on the radio, to be quite honest, they were always talking and talking. I thought, like, what happened to good old-fashioned music stations? So... Um, so lately, I've just been switching off all devices, really, and just been driving without any music, to be honest. So there you go. But I am an 80s kid, by the way. Just if you're interested in my taste of music, then it is like 80s, 90s. That, that's me. There you go. Although I can still listen to current music. I'm not that old. How do you remember all the German noun genders? Oh, good question, because I'm a foreigner myself. Um, but having a background in Dutch, I must admit, us native Dutch speakers do have a feeling for the German genders. I don't know, I can't explain it. It's, it's a built-in thing. Hope that helps. Let's have a look. What next question? Uh, what languages do you speak? Oh, going on on the, the language theme here. Well, I jokingly always say that I speak five languages and I, I'll be very f frank with you. Um, that's a bit of a lie, but <laughs> it looks good on a CV. Let's be honest. So uh, there you go. So my mother tongue, I, I was born in Belgium. Now, Belgian people always think it's a perfectly bilingual country, which on paper it is. But to be quite honest, the Belgians themselves are raised monolingually, if that is a word. So basically, you are either Flemish and then speak Dutch as your main language, or you're born in Wallonia, in the southern part of Belgium, and then your native language is basically Walloon or French. There's a minority in my country that actually speak both languages fluently. A minority. So I was born in Flanders, so I was brought up in a Flemish uh, family, neighborhood, town. So that's why basically I speak Dutch. Flemish and Dutch you have to compare a bit like American English and British English. You know, we're divided by two languages kind of thing. Um, same vocabulary, and yet they're not the same. Same grammar, you know, we can understand each other, but it also happens that, you know, a Dutch person and a Flemish person will be in the same room and they can't even understand each other because of the accent. So that's where the lie comes. I say I speak Flemish and Dutch. Then because of being born in Belgium, I also speak French. Um, because I had a very high interest in German, and that is due to my mother. Uh, shall I blame her? Yes, I'll blame her. Um, in the 60s and in the 70s, Belgian TV, I mean, we're going back now a bit, but Belgian TV didn't start until late evening, early evening. And I was a kid, and my mum didn't really know what to do with it. I was a very quiet kid, so she didn't really know what to do with me. So she put me in front of the television. Now, the only television stations that uh, broadcast in the afternoon was uh, the German stations. And because of our little antenna, yes, we had antennas in those days, uh, because of our little antenna near the German border picked up German television, 
she basically plonked me from, from baby onwards in front of a German TV. And that's how I started learning uh, German. And that's why I decided later in life to become a teacher of German. I speak English, of course, as you can hear. Um, it's not perfect, but um, I think it's the, the second best language I speak. Is that, can, I, can I put it like that? I love English, basically. There you go. <laughs> That's the summary. I just love English. Oh, okay. Does that answer your question? Did I, did I skip a, a, a language? German, Flemish, Dutch? Mm -hmm. No, no, that's it. And uh, after, my, um, <laughs> after my four months in Spain, uh, if you look at um, my previous videos, you, you will learn that I struggled with Spanish. So I cannot even claim to speak un poco de español. Ah, uh, what, oh, sorry, what, what next question? Uh, boom, 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 boom. Yes, uh, again, you speak languages, that must be handy for travels. It is, I mean, to be quite honest, let's be honest, it is, an, uh, an, unless you are in Spain where people don't speak any other languages. Shh. Where have you traveled so far? Okay. Um, well, I am in Europe, so, so we have to stick to Europe. Like I said, before I uh, started my van life, my real van life, I rented one. And um, that took me to a bit of France, a bit of Italy, North Italy, a bit of Switzerland and back home. So that was my first trip. And then with Dean, I made one trip last year. Uh, well, two trips last year, I'm, I'm lying. Uh, I did one trip to Portugal and back because I really wanted to visit Lisbon and in September last year I went to see some friends in Glasgow in Scotland so I did a little tour in the UK and then now I mean now since I've got my YouTube channel sorry totally forgot about to mention that since I've got my YouTube channel I've been to Spain mostly in uh, during the winter looking for that uh, winter sun that we all need so desperately um, what are your future travel plans good question indeed well the plan was never to be here i mean not, never to be here i mean not to be here at this very moment but since i'm here i do have some time to regroup re-energize get the van fixed for the next uh, project and Scandinavia basically short answer Scandinavia is the next project that I is on my cards now if you're viewing from America you might not get this but for fellow Europeans you might get this there is such a thing as the Eurovision Song Contest and it is held this year in Malmo in Sweden which is just across the bridge from Copenhagen in Denmark. And I thought, isn't this the perfect opportunity to do a little Scandinavian trip? I don't think it's even called Scandinavian, it's the Nordic countries, isn't it? I don't know. But anyway, you know, up Denmark, across to Sweden, Norway, Finland, and then combining it with a, like a, a fun event like the Eurovision Song Contest. Again, if you're from America, you might not be aware how big a thing this is in Europe, but it's kind of funky, fun, camp. It's all those things that I like. So, you know, why not combine the two? So that would be my ideal future travel plan. Next question. What are the biggest challenges of van life? Oh, good question question again they're all nice questions thank you very much um <laughs> challenges well i've got engine problems so that the, the challenge is since since i am not a mechanic and i know really little things about cars and engines and all that stuff the challenges are if something goes wrong is what do you do with the problem how do you get it fixed and finding reliable people in different countries or in foreign countries might be a challenge so it's not all sunshine and beaches and all that 
living in a van, it also means that you have to find a place to stay and to sleep, a safe place to stay and sleep. Once you found one, you know, it's perfect. If you want to travel around all the time, you know, continuously, then that means that you have to find a place, a safe place and a nice place continuously as well. So that could be, for some people, a challenge as well. Being in a seclu secluded, being in a small, well, it's a small metal box, let's be honest. Not everybody can uh, deal with that either. Um, but you, do, you tend to, when the weather is nice, you do tend to live outside and just use the, the van to sleep and, you know, cook maybe. So, you know, again, because it's a small space and the weather isn't always great, can you deal with yourself in a small space for a couple of hours, two days, three days? Can you keep yourself busy in a small secluded space like that? You get confronted with yourself a lot. Do you have hobbies? Do you like reading? You know, can you do something else and just go outside? So, yeah, I hope that answers your question. Um, any advice for people who are dreaming of hitting the road? Hmm. Well, like, like I said, I, I, I decided... No, like I said, before I decided to, you know, invest in anything, I just, I just rented a van. And I think that that might be a good advice is, you know, stop watching YouTube. <laughs> and I know we're all here, but stop watching YouTube. Just go and do something. I think that's the best advice really, isn't it? You just, uh, you just have to do it and don't keep on postponing it and watch another view video and another one and another one. And, you know, in the end, you just have to go and do it. I think that would be my advice, really. Um, would you have started earlier? Mm. Well, being 55 and turning 56 next week, yes. Yes, I would have loved to have discovered this at an earlier age. Just an energy question as well, really. I mean, it's lovely and, you know, with the, the wisdom that I have throughout the years, and, you know, I, I take that with me as well. But to be quite honest, you know, energy and all that and enthusiasm. And I, I think I had that more when I was in my 30s and my 40s. So there you go. Yes, I would have loved to have started earlier. Um, oh, Assuming your favorite drink is coffee, how, how good of you to assume that? Uh, what else do you drink? Not much, really. I mean, it's coffee and water, to be honest. I mean, and sometimes fizzy water. I am that exciting. Um, oh, on the theme of coffee, and I don't want to plug anything, but, you know, if you do like the channel and if you think like, hey, I want to buy that guy a coffee, you can do that on a website called buymeacoffee.com and then slash Jack Van Dien. So, you know, I'll put a link in my profile somewhere, but you know, all coffee's welcome. Recently, somebody actually did uh, buy me three coffees in a row. So, so thank you very much. Um, what else? Uh, do you go to the gym? <laughs> well, surprisingly, yes, I do go to the gym. I did go to the gym. Let's put it that way. I, in a previous life, I used to be a uh, personal trainer when I was really into um, you know, working out in the gym. Um, I was living in California at that time and I got a license or a certificate as a personal trainer. Um, the last couple of years and especially last couple of months while I'm living in a van, it is a bit difficult to keep up the gym like on a daily basis. But um, I still use my gym membership card because that's where I go and take a shower. So you know, little tip if you are you know, living in a small van, get a gym membership so that you can always find a place to have a warm shower and, you know, change your clothes and all that. So that's where the gym comes in handy. And yes, I do still work out. Um, next questions. I got to know what made a 55 year old man pack up and hit the road in a van. Hmm. 
I think, I mean, you know, not to get political or all pandemic again, but it was those corona years, to be quite honest. I was teaching before corona hit and um, then all of a sudden we were all, I don't know about your country, but um, we were all locked up inside, really. Schools were closed. I mean, everything was closed. I mean, you, you, you've been there. And um, they were, you know, teachers were expected to teach online which I did and, you know, it was kind of fun as well. It was different, you know, working with computer and movies. And to be quite honest, that's how my YouTube channel got created in the first place. I just taught online through YouTube and making little YouTube videos. And if you click through my uh, YouTube channel, you will find a couple of those videos. I left them in there just for, for, my, for my own sake. So one day I can still say like, hey, that's what I did during those Corona years. They made me unhappy those years. Let's be honest, I think they made a lot of people unhappy. And um, yeah, it was just like, well, that this is it. This is life. I want to break free. I want to break out. And I think that's where the seed was planted to, you know, get a van and, and just travel and, and enjoy life a bit more, to be quite honest. Because it wasn't enjoyable in those days, was it? I'm just going to... Not wrap it up, but I think I've been mumbling and rambling on for long enough. Now, I, I did get a, uh, well, it wasn't a question, but I did get a lovely comment from somebody saying that they really liked my voice and they liked listening to my voice. Uh, let me have a sip. So, so thank you for that comment. Um, it's my voice and um, a lot of people, I'm sure you included, when you listen to your own voice, you don't like it. So I have to admit, when I listen to my own voice on YouTube, I, you know, it's like, mm, yeah, okay. Next. <laughs> anyway, this is just a little reminder that, hey, I'm still a van lifer, but not just now. I have to content myself with little, with, I mean, it's nice though, isn't it? I mean, it is, it is a lovely uh, miniature of Dean, you know, with a solar panel and everything. So I, uh, I have to thank uh, the man who made it for me. So thank you very much for spending half an hour or whatever it is. It feels like half an hour is probably only 15 minutes. But thank you for spending some time with me. And I'm hoping to get Dean back next week which means that next week I'll be on the road and by Sunday next week you can expect another video of me, hopefully. Well, I'm sure. I'm, I'm, I'm confident that I'll be on the road somewhere and I can start sharing my van life with you again. Thanks for checking me out. Click subscribe and, and do all that stuff that you would like to do and then we'll see each other next week. Over and out. Thank you.